Hi, let me show you something that is uh, one of the common mistakes our technicians do. You power your cameras from a switch, then instead of plugging it into this uh, LAN port, you plug into this port. It will create a conflict simply because this is an independent switch on its own program to manage the cameras you add to the NVR. And I'll show you this switch just now where you find it. So if I come like this, then I come to network, there is, there is a switch here. This switch, you set the IP addresses you want and then it can auto-locate to your cameras that you plug in here. Uh, not cameras that you plug in from an external switch. So that's a pointer that you are able to learn. Then uh, if you have cameras from a switch, you plug them here, but make sure that once you add them to the NVR, they're in this range. This range of the NVR. Uh, not, not the same range on this, on this switch. So just be keen on that, so that you don't have a lot of challenges doing installations. Uh, on Dahua, uh, cameras especially i'm really talking about ip cameras in this case uh, then i'll also show you how to add cameras to an nvr so i can just come to this screen directly here click this tab and then it will be able to search and then i can select my camera and add it uh, right here i also can do a manual add directly from the live view screen i can also go to main menu i go to camera I go to camera list, then I'll be able to do a search. Uh, I can also enable plug and play and uh, automatically it will find cameras and then just add them automatic to, to the camera list. I can also enable H265 auto switch, which I would really recommend because this will help us to save on storage. So if you have a DAHO NVR and you're trying to do storage, uh, please enable H265 auto switch uh, in this case, let me just try plug and play and then search for cameras. It will tell me cameras have been added automatically. So that is how you just manage and add cameras to Daho and VR and pay attention to the uh, recommendations. So I have this thermal camera that is requiring me to input the password. So I can just input the password. I think it is this one, uh, it's not. So I'll just delete it so that <coughs> I can add a, another one that works. So because of plug and play, I can easily search or I'll just try and add it manually. So I'll add this camera, then click add. So my camera will successfully add to the NVR. So that is how you manage uh, your cameras on the NVR. Uh, also, let me show you how to manage your NVR bandwidth. So by default, when I go to the main menu, I come to camera. Uh, at the bo bottom here, it should be able to show me uh, remaining bandwidth out of the total bandwidth. At least always ensure that you have at least some extra remaining bandwidth, maybe 15 to 20% of the total bandwidth are uh, always remaining. Because if this is full, then you'll start to have uh, lagging images and lagging uh, pictures, skipping, uh, losing frames in that case. So in the event you're facing that kind of challenge, you just come here to encode, and then you can play around with the following things. One is the coding strategy. So you just use, if you can have smart codec and AI codec, please use that because it will really help you to save to save on storage. Then uh, the type, we you can have the camera to only be there on motion, general, and alarm. So by default, I think just leave it at that. But for compression, use the latest compression. Don't use H264 if you have H265. Uh, use H264B if you have. So just use the latest because it will help you to save on storage. And also uh, the resolution, you can switch between this uh, based on the cameras you have. The frame rate, you can play around with it to reduce the frames, but remember the average eye, eye frame view is 24 frames per second, so you need to be keen on the number of frames you're handling. So uh, in this case, I can just leave it at 18. Then I have two types, CBR and VBR for the bitrate. 
So I can have constant bitrate if I know my network is managed. But uh, it's uh, if I'm trying to do maybe uh, an unmanaged network that can have hanging and all that, I can change to VBR. So in this case, I'm using VBR so that I optimize my performance. Then you can also reduce the quality maybe to three to two uh, generally. Then you can also play around with the bitrate. The higher the bitrate, the more the lag you'll have on your network because you're consuming your bandwidth. So let's say it's a, it's a 4 MP, uh, probably you'll use 2048, but you can also turn down because it will help you to save on storage. Then when I come to more, I have audio. So if I don't want, if I want to save more on storage, I can disable audio recording. Uh, but if audio recording is a requirement, you just make sure to save it. Then we have the substream, which you can also play around with. But now, uh, when we come to record control under storage, uh, let me see. Uh, FTP is the way is record control. Yes, under record mode. So here you can control which stream to record. Do you want to record the mainstream? Do you want to record the substream or any other? Do you want to also capture snapshots? This is where you control it. So if I choose to record the mainstream, it means I'll occupy more storage and get clear high quality images. I can switch to record only substream one, uh, which will save me on storage, but the image quality will be lower. Uh, if I go to substream two, it's even uh, worse image quality, but uh, better storage performance. So these are the, some of the factors you'd have to decide on uh, while choosing uh, to, do, to do this recording and, and all that. So thank you uh, for, the, for your time and I hope I have helped you to understand one or two concepts when it comes to managing your recorder uh, and also managing storage. So uh, more will be coming soon, so let's just keep uh, up to date with this. Thank you so much for your time.